I'm Louis Tellier, I'm a medical doctor. I've been trained and have some specialties in immunology, infectious disease, bacteriology at the Pasteur Institute in Paris. I've been working several years in the Pasteur Institute in Paris and also overseas. Then I came back to work as a director of clinical research for the Pasteur Institute production, working on the immunoglobulins and vaccines research. Then I went to universities, working as a director for research and development in these uh, university hospitals, uh, together with a consultation in um, immunology and clinical immunology departments. And recently, 12 years ago, I went back to Paris and opened a private practice dedicated to uh, infectious diseases, chronic infectious disease, chronic inflammatory immunologic status. And I'm working there. The word bacteriophage means bacteria, uh, bacteria eater. They don't eat the bacteria. They are attacking the bacteria. They have to find them, land on the surface, make a hole in the membrane, inject their genetic material into the bacteria. And then there are two possibilities. All this genetic bacteria replicates in dozens and dozens of small bacteriophage, small viruses that make the bacteria explode and they are lytic bacteriophages, destroyers. And the second part of them is having a, another destiny. Their mat genetic material is, insert, is inserted in the one, in the bacteria's one. There's a kind of a mixed genetic material that get along the generations and will stay there as, and they stay as a, in a dormant stage. They are called lysogenic bacteriophages and they stay like that and for some reason under certain circumstances, environmental change, maybe antibiotic pressure, they wake up and they can become or they can modify the activity and the life of the bacteria and its ability to stay in the environment, to survive, or they can make a, a lytic activity and make the bacteria destro be destroyed itself. So they have, they are the two populations of bacteriophages. Lyme disease is a particularly hard to diagnose disease. Borrelia protect themselves by adopting chronic and cystic forms. They hide themselves in the tissues. They cover themselves with biofilms. So the antibody-based tests are very, very, very poorly active and very poorly sensitive because the level of antibody does not reflect what is the bacterial load exactly. And you cannot say if the infection is still ongoing. So we were facing these difficulties with the current test. And we knew that bacteriophages are very specific and that they don't care about biofilm and cystic form. They will look and search and try to find to encounter the bacteria because otherwise they cannot survive. And as we know already, they were much more numerous than the bacteriophage. So we thought that circulating bacteriophages, specific bacteriophages, if we could, we would be able to find them, that would be a nice and very interesting tool for diagnostic. The current test used to diagnose Borrelia infection are based on anti-antibody presence first, 
and they have some disadvantages. As the bacteria hides itself, as the bacteria adopts chronic form, it doesn't confront with the immune system, so the level of antibodies does not, is not correlated with the bacterial load. And they cannot tell if there is an active ongoing infection. They can only say there was or there wasn't a contact with a lack of sensitivity. The trans lymphocyte transformation test could answer to the question, is there a, an active infection? But they are based on the memory of the cells. So this memory is a short-term memory, first. And second, this memory can be uh, disturbed by antibiotic treatments, immunomodulating treatments, the presence of co-infections, so this is a very fragile test. It can be a, they can, you can have either false positive and false negative. PCR test, which trying to find the presence of the bacterial genetic bacteria, the genetic material. They could be a very good test, and they are in fact, when you find the sequence in an articular fluid, in a spinal fluid, they can give the diagnosis. But in the blood, in the serum, as the bacteria does not circulate, it's a very non-sensitive or very poorly sensitive test. So you don't have these disadvantages with the bacteria PCR phage test for some obvious reasons. Bacteriophages circulate. So you, and they are much more numerous than the bacteria. For one bacteria, you have uh, dozens, 30, 50, 100 of bacteriophages circulating that will be able to go and find them even in biofilms, hidden in the tissues and wherever they are. And they want to find them. Yeah? They must find them, otherwise they don't survive. So if you find the bacteriophage sequence, there is a presence of living bacteria. So it is an in vivo amplifying system of the presence of living bacteria. And on my knowledge, it's the only one. Well, we have worked on Borrelia, which was an ideal candidate because of the controversies, the difficulty of treatment, and all the uh, it was very hard to diagnose infection. But there are others like that. So now that we know how to do it, how to find wild phages, to induce prophages, specific prophages, we can do and to select a good sequence, design a specific probe, calibrate the tests. Now, we, now that we know how to do that, which is a bit complicated, um, we will transpose that know-how to other candidate bacteria. And the first one will be Bartonella, which is a, a very hard to diagnose bacteria and very hard to treat too. Then there will be a rickettsia, all these tick-borne infections. But we can also envisage to go to the veterinary medicine, and we can also envisage to go to other kind of bacteria, depending on what the medical community will ask for. There's a second way of using bacteriophage. If you remember, bacteriophage land on the surface of the bacteria, they make a hole in the bacteria, and then afterwards, when they become lytic, they make the bacteria explode. For that, they use specific compounds, protein and enzymes, which are very, very specialized. We were able to characterize these compounds for Borrelia, and so we are now working on a second way of development, which is uh, to search 
which kind of make a blend of these enzymes and proteins and to to look at their bactericidal power first on cultures then in small animal models and maybe we will be able to propose if not an alternative to treatment i mean a good way to help the actual current treatments Borrelia, maybe in other diseases as well.